Hello there, Matthew J. Elliott here, taking time out from doing British things like correcting people's grammar and... Well, that's it really, to congratulate you, the listener, for selecting the True Blue Riffcast. Yes, you could have picked any one of the thousands of Riff Tracks themed podcasts on the web, but your perspicacity led you to seek out the number one Riff Tracks podcast, and for that, you shall be commended. Now, I'm going to turn you over to your hosts, Dave and Jeremy, and I shall board a flight back to England without even so much as the boxed lunch I'd been promised. Thank you, Matthew J. Elliott. This is indeed the True Blue Riffcast, the number one Riff Tracks podcast in the world. I am Jeremy, and I am joined, as always, by... Sup, everyone. It's me, Dave, episode 101 in the he's a... Yeah. Okay, I'll never... I'll never do that again. I'm sorry. I'm so yeah. sorry, everybody. Uh, so if you're confused by it saying that uh, I was sorting uh, Magic the Gathering cards at work, I'm not actually doing that right what? now. We are doing the podcast. Uh, it would not let me change the title to what I wanted to change it to, which was Encyclopedia MILF, because um, we always like to use a jokey title uh, for the podcast, something to do with the movie. Uh, that's not just the title of the movie, but it wouldn't let me do that because apparently uh, that's that's a banned word. So, well, I mean, I think the word the, the the term MILF has like lost all edginess. Like it was like it was obscene in like two thousand five when they used it on The Office, but like it's it it's it's lost all punch it's like it's kind of like what, what what game of thrones did to the c word now everybody uses it all the time yeah not even not even just australians yeah <laughs> oh man uh so how, how you been dave uh i'm all right uh oh, just um just adjusting to the new schedule which is like it it's it's taken some getting used to after being a vampire person for uh, over a year. I mean, and then for another year before that, it's like, it's taking some getting used to. Yeah. But, but I am, I'm coping as they, you know, or, um, or, or, or as they say, as the youth say, I've been working on myself. <laughs> well, that's what happens that's when you really go from working here, third but... shifts to starting at what, six in the morning. Yeah. 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 So like, I've been trying to like force myself back on because like the last time that I quit this particular job, um, it took me like a month to get like back and it was just it, to get back on like a regular like day schedule. It was just horrible. So I've been kind of like forcing myself to go to sleep <laughs> at like 11 midnight and oh, like my body will just like wake up at like, at, like four thirty, four forty five. And then, like, around 5, I realized that it's not going to get any better. So I just, you know, give up, get ready, and then just go out to uh, go out and start driving, start taking trips. Yeehaw. So, yeah, at uh, at, at 6. So hang That's... on, I have him. And on, another thing is that, like, you might hear him. This is my cat. Yeah. Is, he is Trash so kitty. needy now. He's, like, because, like... Cause, like he he thinks because I'm home at night all the time, like he's used to me like he he and I having like the same like sleep schedule because he'll be out all night long and then he'll come back in the morning when I'm here and um and on my days off on overnights I would stay up all night. Um and uh so he thinks that because I'm home all the time now, that that's gonna that that's still gonna be a regular thing, and he will not leave me alone in the middle of the night. <laughs> like I'll be trying to sleep, and he will just like come through my window, and just just like meow, like what are you doing? Get up! <laughs> like 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 no, go like go kill something. <laughs> it's like, it's You're fine. not supposed I'm to be supposed unconscious to be... human. Yeah, You're supposed to be giving me attention. Yeah, so uh... no, but he's just. He's so he's so needy. It's it's crazy. Well, unfortunately, we don't have anything new uh, this week as far as uh, what the hell James One is up to. Uh, he hasn't posted anything since his uh, Transformers post. Yeah. So, like, well, no, no, no news on Birdemic Eight in the year twenty forty nine. 
No. Remember, oh, Pandemic geez. One remaster, <laughs> remake, rebirth. Oh, don't don't give him any ideas, Dave. He he's he's coming up with enough bad crap on his own. We don't need to help him. Yeah. Well, I mean, especially I don't need to help him. No, no. You you're yeah. the last person that should be helping him with anything. Yeah. Oh man! Speaking of bad movies, we're going to be talking about Inspector Mom. Uh, the oh, Roof Tracks yeah. presents, oh, uh, starring uh, Winnie Cooper from The yeah, Wonder Win- Years. Winnie Cooper, and, uh, something a uh, a reference only our generation is and older will understand. Yeah. They talk uh, about but, Gen Zers like Winnie Cooper. They'll they'll think it's like uh, Winnie the Pooh, or <laughs> it'll be like some some fun Kingdom Hearts character. <laughs> Uh, in other bad movie news, uh, in the weekend box office, uh, the number one movie is The Flash. Uh, really? Yeah, it brought in a, a whopping fifty-five million dollars, which oh no, <laughs> is more more than it should have, but uh, less than they wanted, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Followed by the new uh, Pixar movie Elemental. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse down to number three. Transformers Rise of the Beasts uh, went from number one down to number four. Oh, and that's, that's, yeah. And he has a 66% drop-off, which is uh, kind of big. That, that's really bad. <laughs> um, the Little Mermaid in fifth place still. Uh, and The Boogeyman down down to number eight. Did you go yeah. see that, actually? I know you were talking about it. I did. I did go see it. I went with a friend. Um, and, uh, it's, it's everything you expect a PG-13 horror movie would be oh. in the fact that it's terrible. So not like great. it's, 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 it's not scary. It, it, it bears only like a passing resemblance. It's not as bad as Lawnmower Man, but <laughs> oh, it geez. only bears a passing resemblance to the Stephen King story from Night Shift. Yes. Uh, I, I was corrected, um, in chat it was fifty-five million uh, for Michael Keaton's Batman. Uh, oh, <laughs> that's it's a very good point. Thank you for that. Um, well, okay. I mean, do you want to? I mean, like, do you want to talk about that? I mean, like, are you are you are you gonna see the Flash? Um, no. <laughs> I mean, I don't think I am. I, I'll watch it, uh, just not until it shows up on. On a, a streaming service that I can on watch Max. it. Um, but um, like all the all the all the cameos, because like the multiverse, they still think is really hot, 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 and they don't realize that we're all really sick of it now. Yeah. No, um, I I heard about uh, all the other cameos. I don't really want to get into it too much, just in case there's yeah, somebody listening who is actually listening. wants to actually watch this movie. Um, I'd rather watch the uh, the old '90s live action series, and that was not good. Yeah. Uh, from all from all my recollections, that was uh, that was very much very much so bad. Yeah, but um, but I do like I like this is was supposed to be like a, a a very 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 loose adaptation of Flashpoint by by Jeff Johns and um, who the who the end of that. The end of the uh, DC Comics universe as everybody knew it. Oh yeah, I know that you hate the New Fifty Two. I yeah. did so much <laughs> that actually I stopped reading uh, DC like almost immediately after that. Here, hang on. Let me go ahead and get out my copy of Flashpoint right here on my bookshelf. Who, who I liked Flashpoint. Oh, itself. Andy Kubert. I was right. Yeah. I was correct. I didn't have to pull it off my shelf. I, I said, I was like, <laughs> did Cooper do that? Because I know Johns wrote it. Um, but no, but I have all of the Flashpoint um, tie-ins. But, I, but like, uh, um, so I have a question. It's like, so Michael Keaton's Batman. Mm-hmm. Like, you would think that, like, guys like us, would just be like, oh, we're going to go see Michael, but no, we're not excited to go see that at all. You would think we would be, but we're not. Like, I mean, it wasn't enough. That, that in and of itself was exciting. Like, I'm like, ooh, that's cool. I would watch that 
if I cared enough about everything else in the movie. <laughs> which yeah. I I don't. I mean Okay, now I'm not one of those guys to throw around the term problematic. But <laughs> Ezra Miller is a creepo depot. Yeah. And he shouldn't be in movies. <laughs> yeah, I I agree. And you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't I don't wanna get too much into that stuff because you know, obviously there's there's a lot going on there. Um Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I don't think I don't think that should be a thing. And uh the director said that if they did another flash that that Ezra would be in it and I don't like that idea. At least not yeah. until, you know, they get help and yeah, maybe, you know, face some consequences for some of the things that happened. But enough about that. Let's let's yeah. uh Let's Enough move on that. to... Instead, let's talk about Val Kilmer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. He wasn't in The Flash. No, he wasn't in The Flash. Uh, there was there was uh, two other Batman in The Flash, though, besides the two that we saw in the trailers, but we're not going to get into that. We're going to instead talk about uh, another bad movie. <sighs> That's Inspector Mom. Oh, we're getting right into the it. The latest release from uh, Rift Tracks Presents. This was Bridget and Mary Jo. Uh, Matthew J. Elliott. Okay. Yeah, so Matthew J. Elliott in there. Uh, now, when I looked this movie up, uh, I was met with a little bit of confusion at first because there were yeah, a couple listings too. for it on IMDb, and I'm like, okay. One said TV series and one said TV movie, and they're both just Inspector Mom. Uh, so I'm like, was this like a pilot for it? Or no, it was just a movie. Um, and like I'm looking, I looked it up and I found all of the episodes of the, the TV series, of which it says there were 11. Uh, some of them said that it was uh, 10, so I don't know if they actually aired all 11 initially or what. I have no idea. I don't know what's going on. Where was um, this? Like, like where was this show? I, I don't know. I cannot find that information anywhere. Like, I want to say, like, Lifetime, like it was on Lifetime. It really feels like something that would have been on Lifetime or maybe the Hallmark Channel. I'm not sure. Oxygen. Nothing, there's nothing anywhere that says what channel it originally aired on or anything. It it just says it was also known as the Soccer Mom Mysteries. That's all I can find. God. That was the, that was the working title for it. Oh, for the my series. God. Um, and it kind of makes sense, especially with this movie, uh, which we'll get into in a minute, but I... One of them said that the series was followed by Inspector Mom, the movie, and isn't it's there just, another it's, one? Was this the start of Lifetime's website shows? Oh, I don't know. That might be why I can't find any information on it. Um, but anyway, uh, there was there was two TV movies for it, and then the series. Uh, and we're we're talking about just the plain old Inspector Mom TV movie, an hour and a half long, uh, from 2006, starring Danica McKellar, who was also in the series, of course. Um, now, when I was looking this up, uh, in in the riff toward the beginning of the riff, uh, they make a joke about uh, the director Brad Keller, and how one of the other things on his credits was uh, JFK, Oliver Stone's JFK movie. Sorry, I just wanged my finger on my desk really hard. Uh, and he also uh, produced another movie that was, uh, I don't know, it got a little a little infamous online a few years ago when it came out and the trailer dropped called Assassin 33 AD. Okay. Uh, and I want to talk about this movie for a minute because of I watched it. Of course you it. do, because it's weird and no one's ever heard of it. Of course you want to talk about it. <laughs> I watched it, all right, and it's so – it's one of those movies. It's right in the wheelhouse of, of so bad that it's entertaining to watch. I don't know if it would be 
uh, a good riff necessarily. Um, but it's about uh, <laughs> these guys. They're like a like a think tank, um, and they end up uh, finding out that they're working for uh, a a terrorist <laughs> who wants what to twenty four. No, no, no. He, the, he's working. The guy's working on like teleportation technology, and he finds out that the people that are backing it uh, actually want to use it as time travel, oh, uh, so they can go back in time and assassinate Jesus before he's crucified. Hold on, wait, what? Because that would wipe Christianity out. So, is this a Christian movie? Uh, yes. <laughs> and they do go back in time. Now, wait a second. Hold on. All... Wait. No, 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 no. Okay. This makes no sense. <laughs> because, like, okay. If it... They send a hit it. squad back, <laughs> back in time <laughs> to 33 okay. AD to kill Jesus before he can be crucified. Oh my god. <laughs> and like all of the all of the people that that go back in time and like try to help him um end up being the people from the story like in the Bible. <laughs> oh. Like so oh they do they become like the Doubting Thomas and uh Oh no. And like the guy who helps him carry the cross and yeah, all. <laughs> there's, no, there's, there's no. one part. There's one part where one of the guys is having a conversation with Jesus, and <laughs> he's talking about how um he knows his story because he watched that really violent movie about it, um, and uh, uh, he's talking about the passion. Yeah, and then he's like, "But I did bootleg it, so sorry about that." <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> what? Well, it's. Uh, it's well, okay. it's amazing. <laughs> this the movie is amazing, David. I don't. I can't. <laughs> my brain can't process this. It's. <laughs> I can't. I can't even. I can't even believe someone would. They had a meeting. <laughs> they had a meeting, and they'll be like, "Okay, here's the script for assassination, Jesus." <laughs> and we're gonna make this movie, <laughs> and a uh, whole table full of people like, all, like, oh yeah, great idea. Like what? <laughs> like, yep, it's a thing. I can't. because <laughs> <sighs> that way, you know, he wouldn't, he wouldn't be crucified, he wouldn't be resurrected, and there wouldn't be Christianity. Okay, as we know now, it. Oh, oh, all right. So, okay, look, if you want to get into the weeds on that, okay. <laughs> so, like. <laughs> It, that's just it, the plot it, of the movie, man. I didn't say it made sense. It doesn't. It, it can't because <laughs> Jesus can't like you <laughs> as like the power of God. <laughs> but if you kill him, wouldn't that be like tantamount to crucifying him? And wouldn't he just come back? Also, like if you tried, like wouldn't couldn't he just like put his hand out and like stop the bullets all matrix stuff. Uh, if you if you this? if you want to watch it it is uh, available on Tubi. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> but yes, uh what yes, he life? also made a movie oh, called God. Black Easter, um which I've not seen that one. What? Uh yeah, I don't know, Black Easter. I'm assuming it's probably on a similar no, we're gonna go back. We're gonna assassinate Judas Iscariot. <laughs> oh, wait a second. Is it the same movie? Yes, it's the same movie. It's also called Black oh, Easter. Okay, okay. So it's, it's it's one of them's. Yeah, I saw it under the title Assassin Thirty Three A.D. Um, that was just one of those ones where I just randomly saw the uh, the trailer for it, and I was like, I need. Oh, Black Easter was the original name. Okay, thanks, chat. Uh. Someone in chat knew that. Yeah, uh, one of our one of our uh, one of our followers in here that's in here all the time. 
Crystal Crystal Pool. Crystal Pool. I don't even know if I'm saying that name right. Sorry if I'm not. Uh, anyway, or it's back Christ to o Pool. Christ O Pool. Yeah. Uh, back to Inspector Mom. Uh, <laughs> another one of the writers for this movie was John Bloom, uh, and he is better known to many as Joe Bob Briggs from the last the last drive in. And TNT's Monster Vision. Um, and Face Off. And Face and Off, face yes. Off. He was in Face Off as a, a prison medical technician. There was something else. Oh, yeah, he was in Casino, was too. He was in Casino, yeah. Yeah. Don Ward. And Hogzilla. Hogzilla. And the uh, the infamous CG movie Food Fight. Okay, we can't get sucked down this rabbit no, hole. No, no, we got to stop. <laughs> we yeah. got to stop. Inspector Mom, uh, she was an investigative journalist or something, um, from what I could I tell. I was going to ask you that. I don't know what she is. And now she's just a, a suburban housewife. She's married to a pilot, and she has two kids, and she just wants to be a normal mom. Uh, of course, the movie yeah. starts with her committing, uh, breaking and entering after... Uh, after having anniversary dinner at Beer Nuts, uh, where she gives her husband some some cufflinks that end up uh, being a, a a plot point in the movie later yeah. on, um, and she like breaks into some doctor's office to find some of his records that he's doing things illegally. Why did she do that? Because her friend at the newspaper said. Go do this for me. I don't know. That doesn't. Okay, damn it. She's on her anniversary. Like, okay. First of all, we gotta talk about like this opening scene. This this this, this restaurant scene. The beer where, nuts. Yeah, yeah. And there, they'd be like, here, here's some cufflinks. And like, he doesn't have anything for her. And they start like making out like right there at the table. Well, she like, got you know, like, so she got earrings. Like, she got earrings oh, as she? her present, oh, but okay. she picked them out herself. She like got them for herself. That's terrible. He's yeah. a bad husband. <laughs> um, and they just start they just start like ooh like like it seemed like they were like gonna like like she she was gonna like jump over the table the table and start grinding on it. <laughs> I'm like, what is this? And then she gets a call. From 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 her 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 dried up old prune friend, be like, hey, something weird. Go break into this office and take pictures of files. You know, like a normal person would say, a normal a normal woman wouldn't even pick up the phone. No, um, not on her anniversary anniversary night. Yeah, where like she's they they clear like okay, sorry, moms. Okay, but she clearly like wants to get laid by her boring ass <laughs> dipstick husband. So like, no, it's just like, but like, okay, like, and I think this bears out throughout the rest of the movie is that this Danica McKellar's character uh-huh. has awful, awful, awful tasted men, just like, it, like, be like, um. There's a line in in uh, in the riff of House on Haunted Hill, where Annabelle is um, was was that her name? Uh, what? Annabelle. Oh, I think so. I think so. Yeah. 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 That. Well, I mean, that's, I don't know. It's been a that, while. Yeah. Yeah. It's been. A, yeah. I haven't watched it in a, in a few years, but it still is my favorite riff of all time. But Annabelle is kissing uh, Doctor David Trent, and um, I think I think it's Mike that says. Like, yeah, that's got to be as bad as exciting as kissing a dry erase board. Like, that's what that feels like with, like, all the dudes that, like, well, the two dudes that uh, Dadek and McKellar is, like, interested in. Yeah. Pilot husband and ugly cop. Yeah, the guy that they called the uh, dollar store Patrick Swayze. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's an extremely it's, fitting description for him, too. Yeah, it, it's it's just, I'm just like, what? What what's wrong with you? <laughs> like, but these she, guys. She, yeah, she Who leaves. Cooper. She leaves her husband. She's like, oh, I I got a deadline at the office. I got to go finish this article for tomorrow. And she's like, I I won't be long. I promise. And he goes home, 
and she goes to break into this doctor's office where she almost gets caught. Uh, and uh, she comes For back what? home. Like, what did she get out of that? I I don't know, but it was enough to put the to put as as uh, I think they said to put the bastard away. I think is what the the lady friend said the next day. Yeah. Um, so he must have been doing something again. something real choice. Um, but she goes back home, starts making out with her husband on the couch. All of a sudden, uh, the little kid uh, comes downstairs and. <laughs> Pukes all over the floor, <laughs> which, you know, does happen, uh, especially at the worst times. But uh, and then we get a whole bunch of uh, voiceover, Wonder Years style. What uh, would I do if I There's there's a lot of narration in this movie uh, of her would explaining things that are going on. on uh, and then we see, like, a soccer practice. I thought it was a game, but apparently it was just practice where their uh, their coach from so Columbia coach, coach, is, coach like... Coach Leo or whatever his name was. Like He's from coach, Columbia. Coach uh, Rovira. Ro, Rovira. Rovira. Oh something like that. I'm on a podcast. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he's, like... Him? Yeah. Okay. He's, uh... See? This He's treating them with. like Here it's uh, Ted Lasso or something. And uh, just, you know, t- way too serious. And I don't mean Ted Lasso himself. I mean the other guys. But anybody who watched the show, you know what I meant. Um, I do not watch that show, and I don't know, but I'll take your word for it. Yes. Uh, <laughs> basically taking it way too seriously for a little kid's soccer team. And uh, the dad's like, I'll go talk to him. Oh, wait, I have to go. I have a flight. I guess I can't talk to him. And then he... I have a flight. It's like 4 o'clock in the afternoon. What am I doing here? (laughs) Yeah, then he like he goes... I don't know if it's supposed to be later that day or the next day or what, but he comes home late and he like got into a fight with him at the bar. Coach Coffee and Cocaine, yeah. That's what the guy seemed like. Uh, this, This movie is just all over the place. Yeah, it really, it really is. It was, there was a whole lot going on. Like the coach is sleeping around with like, at least two different women, other than his wife. Yeah, and what is going on with that? There was like the one friend who was like, super horn dog. Like uh, her, her blonde, her one blonde friend, the, the blonde woman. The, yeah, uh, the um. And she's uh, like, oh yeah, uh, she was the one friend who actually did experiment in college. Oh, and that was so gross. <laughs> and then, like so something disgusting. about the something about like her gardener and her tennis instructor, and that was the same story. Like it was, they weren't two separate stories or something like that. And it's like, okay, we get it. She, she's you know, the skank, and she's a whore. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was just really weird because that part of it just kind of came out of nowhere. So that's why. I don't know if this came before the show or after the show, if we were supposed to know any of this stuff uh, or not. And, like, the guy was indebted to a bookie because it's such a uh, small town that nobody has anything to do, so they're betting on the little kids' soccer games. That's and, so stupid. And, like, the coach like, himself I was betting believe, like, on them. These people have <laughs> never been to a small town in their lives. It was so weird. I don't even know where this was supposed to take place. Like, it looked like. Well, I mean, of course, it looked like California because, of course, they shot it in California. Where else are they going to shoot it? But, Canada, right? Vancouver. It's not the X Files. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. It was this. They didn't explain much, or they over-explained everything that was happening. It was, it was a very weird combination of the two. Uh, we get to meet the uh, the one lady who's like into all the MLMs, and uh, what the the multi level marketing schemes. Oh, she was the okay. the single lady so, that like, was like doing the if, beauty if club today, or whatever. She would, if it was today, she'd be selling N- NFTs. NFTs, yep, yep. Essential oils, Sensi, all that, all that good stuff. I bet she has an Etsy store. <laughs> Probably, uh, she has a Facebook up? page for her Pampered Chef. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. She has a she has an Instagram, <laughs> Pinterest. 
I don't know. What are some other lady things, lady <laughs> internet things? I don't know, Dave. Uh, <laughs> uh, the soccer coach ends I'm up getting murdered. To podcast, all right. Give, yeah, cut me some slack. Uh, the soccer coach gets murdered. At first, she thinks her husband did it uh, because because the cufflinks are there. The cufflink was one of the cufflinks was there. The other one was gone, and he didn't know where it went. Um, spoiler alert: It was in the couch. She sat on it at the end of the movie. Um, there's there's a scene in here where she gets into a peanut butter fight with her daughter. Like, in the I middle don't... of this murder investigation. Yeah, yeah. She did. They just have a peanut butter fight. Also, and she's just okay. covered in peanut butter. I didn't. I don't. That's. A... I don't know whose fetish that was that worked on the movie, but well, it was, it was somebody's. Danica McKellar. <laughs> Her own fetish, yeah. Which I mean, like, w- w- guys, if your girl has a peanut butter fetish, I'm not even like, th- you know where that's going. <laughs> you got to have a talk. Be like, hey, look, uh, you perv. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what was going on with that. It was just, it was just weird and completely out of place. I don't know. Most of the stuff in this movie was just weird and out of place. Like she sees the coach before he gets murdered, like going into this one lady's house with her. Uh, and then, so she's like, I'm just going to go for a jog and run up to the window and peek in and see if they're doing things. And, uh, she sees the lady holding her eye and crying. And then she looks over and the coach is getting in his car and leaving. And she's like, Oh no, he punched her in the face. And then she was, like, trying to sneak a look at her later to see if she had a black eye. And, like, she was wearing big, dark sunglasses in one scene. The other one was the uh, the beauty thing where the, the MLM lady was making all of them wear, like, cucumber eye masks yeah, and cu- yeah, mud packs on their face. Yeah. And so she couldn't see then. And it was just bizarre. This is, um, okay, can I just say that this is this is just like a horrible, like the worst kind of female rear window view of how women behave, you know, like they're just like obsessed with like, like, like not necessarily gossip, but like other people's lives and stuff. And yeah. like it's I don't like it. It was <laughs> I really don't. It's not a good look. No, it was, it was, I want to say, what's the best way to describe just the entirety of this? It was, it was literally, what if Murder, She Wrote, but Soccer Mom? What, what if Murder, She Wrote, but stupid? (laughs) I mean, that's what this movie is. Yeah, it's very stupid. Like, I am very concerned that the fact that this movie has almost a five out of 10 star rating on IMDb right now. Uh, it's this TV series is seven point four. I, I don't see the TV series being much better than this. It can't um, possibly be. Well, okay. Here's here's the episode titles for this for this show. Just just as, so you can see what we're talking about here. Uh, the the first episode was the corpse's costume. Uh, then there's the mystery of Mrs. Plumley, Casualty Friday. Oh God. A Farewell to Armoires, A Pinch of Death, Bride in Doom, The Haunted House Horror, The Mystery of the Dying Patient, which... The I'm... Mystery of the Dying Patient. Yeah, that's... I want everyone to remember that. Um, that... I don't know if it's possible to have negative creativity. <laughs> but if it is, like, like that... Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, the mystery of the dying patient is mystery the of the dying worst patient. title for anything. Uh, Mother Goose murder, rake your thieves, death now, in you ten easy about steps. What that one was supposed to be? Uh, yeah, it happens in the fall. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then the other the other movie, uh, was like a kidnapping in ten easy steps. Uh, I, <laughs> cozy mysteries don't have titles. This stupid and cozy mysteries titles are dumb as hell. 
Yeah, this is this is like the worst cozy mystery thing ever. Yeah, Kidnapped in 10 Easy Steps was the other movie. I, I'm glad that they ended it. it. It seems like it had a very short life, and it deserved a very short life. It deserved to not have anything like, other yeah. than the TV movie, but... It had to be it was... sold to Rift Tracks 15 <laughs> years later. It was... It was this was the perfect movie for uh Bridget Mary Jo though. Like Oh yeah. It was such a good Now I bet this was also kinda of like sorry. Um this is also kinda of like the perfect thing for Matthew J. Elliott to to write riffs for because boy oh boy does that guy love mysteries. Oh yeah. I mean he 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 writes a ton of them on his on his yeah, own. Yeah, he writes so. them for a living, yeah. <sighs> so bad. So bad, like uh, okay, and then uh, the, the murderer was the MLM lady because she was well, of one of the was. she was one of the women that he was sleeping around with, and uh, she he was funneling. Let's see, they were funneling the money out of the gardening club. Oh my god! And that's All why that she put the, the gardening dumb, club. That's why she put the dumb horny friend in in uh, the treasury position because she wouldn't notice. And, uh, cause she was too stupid. So it turns out that the coach was then taking all that money and betting it on stuff and he lost all the money. So she got mad. So she dipped her fountain pen in some poison and like jabbed it in his neck, but it wasn't strong enough, even though it would only yeah, take no. a drop to kill you. And then, so she smashed his face in with his megaphone that he used to carry around while he was coaching. And, uh, yeah, then she tried to attack Dana, get Danica McKellar in the minivan. Uh, she had a gun to her in the back seat, and she's just like, what are you doing? Like, she knew her name, and, and everything was hilarious because the lady just, like, took her mask off, and she's just, like, explains the whole thing to him, to her. And then she, like, hits the brakes, so she, like, flies forward and hits the seat and drops the gun and she's like didn't you know to always wear your seatbelt <laughs> and then uh, the dumb cop shows up and saves her from being stabbed with the same fountain pen <laughs> and then she goes back home and finds the cufflink on the couch and then her friend calls her again and is just like what's the next mission and that's the end of the movie <laughs> it's just like she oh. never had sex with her husband. <laughs> I mean, they have two kids, I mean, so uh, at least it happened at some point. Yeah, but not in this movie. Not oh, in this hi, movie. Buddy. I'm on a podcast. Not in not in the oh, entire oh, oh. entirety of what the three days that the movie takes place during, or two weeks or whatever it was, because everything is edited together so poorly. We have no idea when anything was actually happening. We don't know where it was happening. We don't know what year. We, we, we can assume it, it's like mid-aughts, 2005, 2006-ish. It probably just um, around the time that it was released, I would imagine. Yeah. Not anything but, like... Um, uh, we don't know where, like, do you know the name of the town? Nope. Crab Apple Cove? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure. I'm sure there was a name somewhere, but... Uh, okay, here's the real. Okay, here's the real test. Without looking at, without looking at the internet, Jeremy. Yeah. On your honor, without looking at the internet. What is Winnie Cooper's name? Huh? What is Danica McKellar's character's name? What is it? In this one? Yeah. Uh, oh God! It starts with In an the M. The movie we just watched. What's the character's name? <sighs> I want to say it was like Maggie or something. See, I don't know it either. Maddie. It's Maddie. I was close. Maddie. I knew it was an M name. Like, I literally, right before you asked me that, I had looked right at it where it says for Maddie Monroe, and I <laughs> couldn't remember immediately after I stopped looking at it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's that unmemorable. <laughs> this, this whole movie. But, you know, that being said... I I can definitely see myself watching this riff again. I can see myself watching the riff again. I don't know, like, 
I definitely wouldn't watch it on Rift. No, oh, no. Because boy, oh boy, does it have a Copper Mountain effect on it. It like, felt like it was way longer than an hour and a half. If, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and and that's kind of long for Rift tracks now, because Rift tracks now is generally about uh, seventy-five minutes. Yeah. Um, which is fine, but like this was like this was an hour and twenty-five minutes, and you, and that's a long time with like, <laughs> just like this mindless garbage, just with like. It's like it's 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 almost as bad as a talking cat. To like, as 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 far as like like I'll, like production it does quality, have the Copper Mountain effect, but I won't compare it to Copper Mountain. I don't think it's that bad, but it's it's definitely like a talking cat where you can't believe it's like <laughs> as long it's running as long as it as 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 it is. Yeah, because it's just yeah. It definitely has that going for it. <sighs> yeah, this movie was was longer than uh, the Castle of Fu Manchu, which I'm fine with. <laughs> <sighs> you know, I'm 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 assuming, and this is probably a safe assumption, but I'm assuming that we are going to be getting uh, at some point. Uh, the other movie of this, the other one from well, Bridget yeah, well, Mary Jo, kidnapped and well, ten yeah, easy they steps. Did all the, yeah, I mean they 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 did all the Mary Higgins Clark's, and I can't imagine that that can't imagine that that this movie is anywhere else. Um, because like I've never heard of it. Have you heard of this, Inspector nope. Mom? Nope. With Winnie Cooper. I, I mean, uh, you have all those services uh, where they have all those horrible. Bottom of the barrel <laughs> garbage movies like Tubi and 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 crack horror and whatever <laughs> you know whatever else. Here's here's the here's the tag or the the blurb for the uh, the second movie. You ready for this? Yeah, no, but okay. <laughs> Set against the backdrop of the latest craze. Okay, now <laughs> this came out uh, two thousand seven. I'm gonna let you guess. What you think? Two thousand seven. What you think the latest craze? The latest craze? For, we'll say well, for not... suburban housewives. Okay, okay. So it's not the war in Iraq. All right. No, damn. It's, <laughs> um, I'm just, I'm just gonna go through the things that it's probably not. Um, it's probably not the Michael Crichton novel, State of Fear. Um. It's Let's see. probably not uh, uh, the, the PlayStation Two game God of War. Uh, well, we'll say there there was a reality show that started two years before that movie came out okay, that popularized so, this. Okay, so there's who wants to be a million? No, who wants to be a millionaire? That was that was way earlier than that. That was way before two thousand seven. Yeah. Oh no. <gasps> Is it American Idol? Nope. Oh. <laughs> um, so 2000, you said, okay, okay, since 2007, so 2005, I was in Germany. It was, it was hosted, show. it was hosted by uh, a guy who hosted another show at the same time on the same channel uh, on Sunday nights. <laughs> Not The Apprentice, I don't think. Oh, God, no. <laughs> Dancing with the Stars? Dancing with the Stars. What was oh, Dancing with it? the Stars okay. about? It's about Dancing with the Stars? The ballroom dancing. Oh. The latest craze, ballroom dancing. <laughs> Maddie Monroe must discover the identity of a dangerous kidnappers and bring them to justice before her best friend becomes their next victim. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> that one was not written by Joe Bob Briggs. <laughs> that one was just Danica McKellar and uh, William Pearson, who also wrote the the first movie with the other two people. No. Oh. So I don't know. I 
I don't know. I'm really disappointed that Danica McKellar wrote this nonsense because, like, it's just be really like, I'm I'm a smart lady and I I teach girls that math is cool. And it's, it's just <laughs> garbage. So that kind of like you know makes me think she's really dumb. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, to say hey she hosted Domino Masters last year or judged oh, oh, oh. Domino Masters. Is with... that like the World Series of Poker? No, it was people who like built domino things and knocked them down. <laughs> oh, oh. She was a judge. They had like a big fancy set and just like um, a, a drum roll and like a score for like when all the dominoes fall fall down. I don't know. I can't. I can't believe they made a show about it. Of course, now well, there's there, a there show are, about there, making there cable making channels. real cars. Something. Well, this was on Fox. <laughs> it was on Fox. Yes, it was on network TV. Oh man! Of course, yeah. Now there's a show about making real life cars into into life size Hot Wheels. What is um, Danica McKellar doing right now, anyway? Uh, that was the last thing she did. It was last year. That was last year. Yeah, twenty twenty two, Domino Masters, hosted by one of the guys from Modern Family. I was about to say, who's this fat guy? Oh, I oh, it's it's okay. So yeah, all right. Oh, I okay. I'm getting the video of Domino Masters right now. <laughs> okay, so one. They literally just set up dominoes, and I mean, I like watching domino displays like being set off, but I don't. I, I, I don't understand why it's so impressive. Like, it just seems like anyone can do it. I mean, I used to have I used to have Domino Rally as a kid, so there was literally a thing to set up your own Domino. Was there things. another Wonder Years? Yeah, there was a a thing a couple oh, years wait, ago. This was on Disney Plus, wasn't it? Well, it's it's I think it's currently on, but it was on ABC. Um and but it took place the flashback parts took place in the eighties and I think it was narrated by Dulé Hill, um, Alabama. where he was like the grown up voice. So yeah, it was just basically Dulé Hill. Oh, Charlie. Okay. Yeah, he was on the West Wing. Yeah, and yeah, Psych. Charlie. Yeah, he was. Um, he was doing the president's daughter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's not completely inappropriate for the body man of the president of the United States to be dating his daughter. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, you did a poor job there, Martin Sheen. <laughs> or Charlie just did a good job, you know. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we are veering way off course. Hey, that's okay. It's better than last week. Yes, at least this is slightly more coherent. Like I watched this movie today, and th- this was a brain dump for me. Like seventy five percent of the movie, I don't remember just because it was just a, a nothing burger. Yeah, well, no, well, like your brain just just like it, it's so like dumb. Like, no, this really was a dumb movie. Yes. I don't want to like, like it. It was, and your your brain just 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 rejects it. Yeah, you know, it's like 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 what stands out to me is just how awful like Danica McKellar's taste in in men is, <laughs> and like like these are like her I like like the the bland pilot man is like the husband. Yeah, she just can't wait to get home and bang, and then <laughs> her like her like fantasy side piece is this really ugly cop. It's like, well, and, he like, was he was her ex like, too. I do remember oh, that what, much. Oh, yeah, yeah, and she clearly still had a oh, huge she, thing going on yeah. for him. Oh yeah, she was splooshing hard for him, <laughs> even though she's married. Yeah, yeah. We real, but, uh, real, real, real good job there, mom. 
Yeah. <laughs> Inspector Mom. Inspector Mom. <laughs> like, given half a chance, like, 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 like the second, the second her husband goes down or gets like taken <laughs> out by like the small town mob, is that she is just, she's just running headlong. Like, oh, she's just going like straight diving back to, into this other dude's bed. Straight back and to he's Scott, just gonna be to and he's just gonna be sitting there waiting for it to be like, Oh yeah. Like like he's single he's just waiting for her. Oh yeah. Like that's I knew you'd pathetic. be back. <laughs> How pathetic is that that you're just sitting around waiting for like a married woman for like her husband to eventually get killed so that you could just like take her and just like you know, just like just like take care of her and like these other the children of another man. For like the rest of your life, be like, don't you have any self-respect, dude? No. I very, very obviously no. Yeah. Like, there's no question about that, at all. Oh man. Um. Yeah, that's so. What's right? That's about all I got for that. Uh. Okay. Uh. So, what's the first one? Uh. Plot. I don't know. I think the. Let me bring up my list here. I had I had everything prepared. You do except all for the this. work, Jeremy. I don't know I... what our categories are. Uh, yes, plot. Plot is the first. Oh God, uh, one. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, not a great, no. not a great plot here. Yeah, there is a plot. Like, but I, it's just not good. I didn't hate this. Like, like I don't even think I dislike it. Um, but like, it's not like Copper Mountain or, or things or anything like that or cats, but Russell. man, has it got a lot of problems. Hey, you could be a mouthy old man. Sorry. My, my dog's barking. How dare you? Hey, Only nothing. my cat's allowed to interrupt the podcast. <laughs> uh, yeah. One, I agree with one. It's, it's not something that it makes me angry. Um, but it's just dumb and bad. Uh, yeah. Acting. <laughs> oh God, dude, the performances were all horrible. <laughs> These, like, like I can't think, like, even, like, even Danica McKellar, who's really only good at playing Winnie Cooper. Um, it. Uh, I don't want to give it. It seemed a zero. very, very community theater esque. Yeah, like especially like. Uh, the bimbo friend, <laughs> yeah, and, and and the other idiot who did the murder. Like, yeah, those performances are just awful. The so, only the only performance that I didn't hate, uh, I think her name was Bernice. It was the the first lady that she saw like screwing around with the coach. She. She was the only performance for some reason. I think her performance was the best. I don't know why my brain is telling me that, but I mean, there's no way my brain, brain whatever, either, but... whatever, lied to me. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to give it a, a zero or a one. I don't um, want to give it a two either. I, I think. Like... I think on the on the the sliding the scale sliding of riff scale, tracks. Yeah. I don't know. It, it, a one and a half. Yeah, well, I mean, it's more competent than the performances in like dancing. It's on. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, I think one point five is a, a good place to land on this one. Yeah. Uh, up next is dialogue. Ugh. Oh my god. See, I don't want to give this such a bad score, but it's just like, dude, the script was terrible. I mean, it, it was wasn't, yeah, bad. it wasn't, it wasn't good. It, it, was, it wasn't good. So, like, okay, two. Two, it wasn't, it wasn't offensively bad, but it wasn't good. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't, like, cats. Yeah. <laughs> Which I can't get my brain to purge, unfortunately. <sighs> um... Cinematography. There was no cinematography in this. There was no, yeah. It was just like all just like six foot in the air. Just like neighborhood bleh. shots. Yeah. Showing suburban houses. Yeah, two. Whatever. Uh, I, I'll, I'll say point, point five. 
just because there wasn't really any to speak of. Okay. Uh, editing. I, I, it was competent. Three. I mean, yeah. On on again, we're we're not doing this, this just on the movie about. itself. I mean, yeah. This is this is our our riff our sliding riff track scale. This is just in comparison to other other riff tracks releases. Usually, we we tend to compare it to just the last few like most recent that ones that seen. we've done. Yeah. Um, there was no, there was like no effects in this movie either. That's the next one. Effects. Um, no, yeah, there was nothing. Um, it, it was just, it just was nothing. There wasn't anything yeah, there. Yeah, so like, well, um, a couple of fake punches thrown. Um, <laughs> but I that doesn't know. really I mean, count like, as an effect. I mean, I can't think of like, yeah, there weren't any effects. There's like zero effects in this, so yeah, I, I, I think know, it's just. Man. I'm just gonna give it a zero because there's not really anything there for. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. There's nothing to do. Yeah, I was <sighs> gonna drag the score down, but whatever. Sounded music. I don't. I, I, I don't, don't remember, remember a single bit of of music from this at all. There was a, there was some chipper stuff during like the title sequence that I kind of remember, but I don't. I don't remember. <laughs> like it was just totally forgettable, one hundred percent forgettable. Uh, so I, I, I get two, whatever. Might as well, yeah. Uh, directing. Um, <laughs> okay, look, everything is the director's fault. So one, one, okay. Uh, and then the 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 character or personality of the film itself. It, well, it definitely has a personality, but it's it's so just like <laughs> it's like cheerleader who became wine mom personality. <laughs> so what, what is that out of five? Like. What is that out of? I don't <laughs> how do we, know. How do we like, convert like, that into of, a numerical? I don't, I don't know how that to a numerical value. A numerical value, but I mean wine moms. I don't know. We'll just go two and a half. Okay, yeah. So it definitely had a personality. Yeah, but it wasn't like. Offensive, but yeah. Ow, ooh, you jerk. <laughs> uh, and then, Why of course, uh, did the riffs make make the movie watchable? Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, I would would not have ever watched this movie otherwise. I would oh, have no seen way. something and have been I, like, "What?" I that's, would have no. noped out so fast. If like if, if if like if if you put this in front of me, and well, not you, okay. Because, like, if you put this in front of me, I wouldn't watch it, okay? <laughs> well, let's say a lady that I happen to like quite a bit, if she said, hey, I want you to watch this with me, of course I would watch it with her. Yeah. But that on, is on the your only own. circumstance I can think of watching this movie <laughs> unriffed, because I certainly wouldn't watch it unriffed alone. No, no. Uh, I I feel exactly the same. There's no reason... To watch this movie on Rift, unless, like you said, like you were in that sort of situation, then I could see it. But yeah, yeah, like, look, like, well, yes, of course, of yeah. course, I will watch this with you. But <laughs> that's got to be like in the ding phase. I can't yeah. imagine <laughs> if you're married and be, to be like, here, watch this with me. I can't imagine it'd be like, no, of co- no, what, what? Ah. <laughs> <sighs> uh. There was there was a movie, I want to say. I don't remember if if we watched it while we were, like, on vacation, or if it was during COVID. I can't remember. Um, but it was some weird Lifetime thing, and we watched it just because of morbid curiosity, because we started watching. And we're like, what is this horrible? But I wouldn't even watch this under that condition. Like, there's, there's nothing under about COVID? it that, huh? Under COVID conditions? Yeah, when I had COVID, and I was oh, like oh, stuck. Oh, when you had COVID, I thought yeah. you had, like, would you watch it like, like, you, <laughs> like, like in 2020 when we we're all watching like Tiger King? It's like, no, why would you do that? We all. Were... <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, Tiger King to watch. Just when I was stuck in in the the room for a week by myself and all I had was TV like but and it was it was a similar type of movie to this but even this one is just 
there's just too much that's bland about it, I guess. It's just like tap water. Nothing yeah, no, exciting. It's, yeah, it's yeah, it, it 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 would be like kissing that dude, you know, <laughs> like I wouldn't do that either, Dave. I mean, well, I wouldn't either, Jeremy. It's, <laughs> it's, yeah. Oh man. I think that's all we got for this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go oh. get it. It's it's worth it if you like it's a good really one. really Okay, sorry moms. If you like really dumb shit, then that go ahead and 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 watch it. If like if you're into this kind of thing, it's watchable. Like you'll be able to power through it like like we did. Yeah. Um <laughs> I'm probably going to watch it again at some point. Yeah. Um, I if if we get the second movie, I'll probably rewatch this one I, before I watch the if, second one. If we get the second movie, I will not throw a fit the same way I threw a fit with Oblivion 2. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, yeah, that wasn't <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't great. Yeah, I was just like, I was like Oblivion 2. I was like, no. Dave was so mad about that. I, it was, so it was mad. Five years ago, and I could still just like I was in that room over there, and I just like looking <laughs> at my phone, I saw Oblivion Two, and I was just like, I can't believe this and then the first thing i see after that is like jeremy tags me in a tweet and be like dave chaddock is going to be so mad and i do you remember right. that yes i do yes i do <clears throat> um yeah i don't know full stop yeah full stop yeah no we'll watch the second one well it's fine one, yeah. it's fine everybody i know i know what will be like on the podcast <laughs> We have not yet, and we, we can. Should. We should. Yeah, let's do we that. We should do yeah. that. I need to rewatch that one. It's been a long time. Yeah, I just want to be like, like. I mean, I'll watch it with the the riff, no problem. But like, I was, I just, I just kind of want an excuse to watch that movie again. <laughs> like, you know, kind of have it be like a palate cleanser. You know. Yeah. Um, uh, I do know what we'll be watching for sure on uh, August seventeenth. Oh yeah, well yeah, of course it'll be uh, uh rad, uh Riff Tracks Live. Riff Tracks we Live definitely Rad definitely don't have tickets for Nashville for that one. Yeah. I I haven't already booked a hotel room for three nights for that one. Three nights? We can yeah. doing there for three nights. I don't even know how I don't even know if I'm gonna be there for one. <laughs> uh well it's kind of our our makeup anniversary <laughs> trip that we didn't take last year. Uh oh, are you taking we, Joy? Yeah, yeah, the two of us are are going, uh, my wife and I, and uh, so we're you know going to do some other stuff while we're down there, so it's not just solely an excuse for me to go watch for Tracks Life. Yeah, on the on on the plus side, on the plus side, uh, my influence while I was still employed at the movie theater worked, and my local theater is showing the Rift Tracks Live. Well, you'll uh, be in broadcast of Rad. I know. So all my friends who who are around here and are going to be seeing it um, might see me actually on the screen, which is kind of fun. Uh, are we during... going to be sitting together? What's that? Are we going to be sitting together? I I was kind of counting on it. <laughs> okay, I was about to say that would be kind of weird. Like, it would be if, weird. If, we're if, both there and we're not like yeah. And we're not yeah. Okay. Um, I I have we'll a feeling we might have a couple other people sitting next to us as well. Um. Uh, uh, that are um, that are are some some supporters of the podcast uh, that I know are going to be there. Um, uh, so we're going to have like a whole row, maybe. Uh, I was I was asking them because uh, they've gone to the last couple, and yeah. I was asking like, okay, so what do we do? Like, how early should I get in line at the theater like to get my spot? And uh, I got some some good advice on that. So. I'm, I don't know. I'm just looking forward to the whole thing. It'll be a lot of fun. And uh, looking forward to meeting a lot of people down there that have not met in person yet. Like Dave. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we only talk all the time. Yeah, we've only been talking all the time for, what, seven, eight years now? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Since <sighs> the last time. See, like, now, I'm at, like, the thing, like, 
maybe I'll be able to go to Tennessee and not be threatened with a ten million dollar <laughs> lawsuit. That's, that's gonna be a thing. That's pretty much what started it. Us yeah. talking was that because I reached out to you over that. Yeah, be like everyone at Reddit is calling you horrible names. Like, of course they are. James Wen brought us together, Dave. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> at least that's one good thing. Yeah. That All was right. so horrible. All right, guys. If you're going, uh, let us know and, and uh, we'll say hi. Yeah. We'll say hi. Uh, we, we won't shy away from anybody. On on that yeah, note, we're celebrities. We're going to be celebrities at Rift Tracks Live. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Everyone's yeah, going to know. Everyone's going to know who we are. <laughs> well, the last time was our, like a lot of people knew who I was. I was really surprised. I think like four people will know who we are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. But on that note, we're gonna we're gonna get out of here. Uh, if you enjoy the podcast and you'd like to support us, uh, really all you got to do is just give us a follow. On Twitch, uh, that way you can be notified whenever we go live, uh, which is pretty much just going to be every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to do some sort of a special live broadcast from Nashville um, before the live show or potentially after the live show, depending on uh, what Dave's plans end up being. Um but you can also follow the podcast on Twitter at TB Riffcast. And uh, I'm also hanging out around on social media at PB and Awesome. And you can uh, check me out on Twitter at D Chuck Author. Hey, you got it right this time. First I try. Got my own Twitter handle right. <laughs> uh, and check me out on Amazon, Monkey, Happy Valley, Tumbleweed Dossier, Santa Santa, all them, all them things. It's on Audible too. Yeah, definitely check them out. Use your use your free Audible download oh, for uh... oh 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 and uh, if anybody's in chat, which I know you're not, <laughs> but um, I just ordered twenty copies paperbacks of Monkey, and I want to get rid of all of them. <clears throat> I'm exchanging them for reviews. So if you're listening to this in the archive. And not six months from now when Jeremy uploads it onto the podcast. <laughs> uh, okay, it won't be that long. Okay, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just giving you a hard time. Um, send me a DM, and, I, and, and you want a, a paperback of Monkey, and you want to exchange it for review, hit me up in the DMs on Facebook or Twitter, and we'll talk about it. I'll send you a PDF, a PDF of the of the book you'll read it review it and then when uh the re the review goes live then i'll mail you the i'll get in touch with you and mail you the paperback about 14 of these have already been spoken for but nice. i'm ten thousand percent sure that most of these people are going to flake so <laughs> that's just how it is um like be like here do it and then and then they just and then they just won't do it so, but I, I, I specifically said in the post, no flakes. Yeah, I don't flake out on you, Dave. I guarantee you people are going to flake out because some of these people have flaked out on me before, but yeah. it's, it's, it's fine. But if you write me a review on Amazon, I'll send you a paperback. All right, guys. We will see you next time right here on the True Blue Riffcast. Rock till you die. Oh